So, here we have it. The final part, part 6 of tutorial 15. Um, you can see I've already been messing about, but I'm going to show you how we get this all proven in terms of our tunnel and the encryption. So, um, if we look at uh, show uh, VPN IPsec status, we can see we have an active IPsec interface on ETH0 at 38002. We can actually have a look at uh, show VPN IPsec SA. And we can see that we've had 3.3, because I I went messing around to make sure I could, um, or else this would be a very embarrassing bit of the video. Um, we have 3.3 um, kilobits out and 756, you know, um, kilobits in. At the other end here, we can also do a show VPN SA. We can see the converse. So it is running through. How did I get this traffic? Well, I did a ping. So if I want to ping from the 172 network here across to the 192 network over here, I'm going to set the ping going. And that will keep going. And I'm going to set a ping going at this end as well. And that's going to keep going too. And then we can go up and see, run the same command again, and see what's happening. You can see the packets mounting there in terms of the encryption. So our VPN tunnel is up and running. There you go. Side-to-side -side VPN covered. We now have fully encrypted packets going back and forth between our two endpoints through that tunnel and the internet machine in the middle we never needed to touch it. I wanted to do a fake internet machine in the middle, to, mostly to show that I didn't tell this anything about this tunnel. This was done at the east and at the west. I didn't need to tell anyone in the middle, which is exactly what would be the case with the internet. You don't have access, I don't have access to any of the routers through the internet, so we can't tell it to do anything. We can't tell it to recognize what we want to send through. All we can do is manage our endpoints. So in this network, our east and our west are talking to each other and we're able to get packets back and forth, fully encrypted, and I'm just emulating it here with a ping. So that's it. Uh, it remains just to sign off. Uh, my name is Aidan Killian. You've been watching uh, tutorial number 15, parts one to six, if you've watched them all the way through. Uh, this is the end of part six, and we've just shown a lot of pinging going on between DSL1 and DSL2 through an IPsec VPN tunnel. So it's secure transmission, encrypted transmission between these machines through our fake routers here. Uh, we had a, 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 not fake routers, sorry, fake internet on the 64 and the 38, and then two other Viata machines which are the local routers on the 172 and on the 192. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I've certainly enjoyed uh, creating a lot of Viata tutorials in terms of helping you learn Viata and how you can use it within software. And hopefully you've gotten something out of it too. It remains to cover the two big things in tutorial 16 and 17 we're going to cover natting and firewalling because some of you probably watched these videos and thought, you know what, that's not actually quite true what we've done so far. And it's not really. Um, I'm trying to take it piecemeal so that we can learn step by step uh, tutorial 13, how to configure a Viata, tutorial 14, how to get routing going through a Viata, tutorial 15, setting up a VPN uh, IPsec tunnel. But of course, none of that is real until you start applying firewall rules and NAT rules. Uh, so we're going to cover that in tutorial 16 and 17. My name's Eamon Killian. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. Um, and thanks very, very much for watching.